Welcome back to TV Nation. Investment brokers all across the country have discovered a brand new way to make a killing. AIDS. If I told you that I could take your money and double it, but in the process somebody would have to die, nobody would be killed. I mean, they're going to die anyways. What would you say to that? Anybody I know? Nobody you know, a total stranger. He was going to die anyways. Probably. Maybe. I don't invest in the Reaper. Well, I want you to take a look at this whole investment story we've done here for TV Nation. We sent our reporter, Karen Duffy, out to investigate how to make you some big bucks with no risk. Let's take a look. The best things in life are free. Just because the booming 80s are over doesn't mean there aren't any more high-prof investments. Investment brokers have discovered a huge new industry. They buy up the life insurance policies of people dying of AIDS and resell them to the public for a profit. To find out how this business works, I went to see Stan Sloven, a broker in New Jersey. So as an investor, say I give you like a $50,000 nut. For a $50,000 investment, you would get back a $25,000 profit. Sounds good, and it's easy to understand. For instance, if a person with AIDS has a life insurance policy worth $100,000, you can pay just $50,000 for it. And when he dies, you get the whole $100,000. So what would be a primary risk to the investor? There isn't. Mm -hmm. There is no downside. No downside. That's because once you buy a dying person's life insurance policy, you're always guaranteed to get your profit. It's just a question of when. We went to Waco, Texas to talk to the pioneer of this new business, Brian Pardo. So but by the look of your office, looks like you're real busy. How is business? This year? Well, business is booming. <laughs> and yeah, I, I am busy. How does your business work? Well, uh, first of all, we're given the files of coming from people who have submitted their policies to us to evaluate for an offer. These are all people who have AIDS and want to sell? Yeah. Oh, yes. All these are people who want to sell their policies wow. and who were buying their all policies. All over the country? Yes, from all over the country. Aren't you going to run out of people with AIDS? Even though there's about 350,000 people nationwide with full-blown AIDS, yeah. uh, or maybe a little less, that's a revolving door. And the average life expectancy of a full-blown AIDS patient is 14.6 months. And there's a big reservoir of people out there, more than a million. I think our average age of our seller is about 34 years of age, which to me is a very tragic number in terms of their age. But on the business side of this, they really haven't paid in much. They've only paid in maybe 1000 or 1200 in premiums. So you can say, well, wow, you know, they only paid in $1,200 in premiums and they got $60,000, let's say, or something like that. That's a major gain. We have this huge network of buyers, mm -hmm. and so we're constantly transmitting information to our network. Uh, Jackie Davis back here is our controller. I guess it'd be a fair statement to say you've seen a few million dollars a week flow through here too, don't you? <laughs> and then would it be fair to say that you deal with millions of dollars a week? <laughs> would that be would that be very fair to say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> caught me. <laughs> so what are you really? doing now, Brian? Well, I'm signing for us. <laughs> we, I, I I sign whatever's put in front of me. I'm a pushover. So look at <laughs> I say I'll sign anything but a check. <laughs> the title work gets done. The trustee changes the title, and we've got a done deal. And all this is legal? Oh no yeah, problem? sure. Oh yeah. A Texas state representative spoke with us about buying the policies of dying AIDS patients. I have six policies, and uh, in the six policies, I have invested about $200,000. Mm -hmm. And you've done okay? Um, I, I've been in it about a year, had, had one policy come to fruition, and, and uh, made about uh, 17 to 18% on that. This, this is a lot safer investment than, uh, for instance, the stock market, which is depends on some factors that we don't know what they are. But as an investor, a cure for AIDS must be your worst fear. Uh, there's no evidence of any cure on the horizon, and you know, that's always back in your mind that someday they may cure AIDS. Uh, but at this point, that's really not a risk factor. It's, it's not probable. Uh, I mean, it, it is absolutely that you're going to die once you get AIDS. The shorter that they, their prognosis is, of course, the more the policy is worth. Uh, and the longer that they live, the, the less the policy is worth. If, if the patient dies earlier than they say they could, you, you could earn up to as high as 30%. I went to New York where I met another broker, 
David Landy. How does the investor find out when the AIDS patient dies? One company that comes to mind has cards they give people and ask them, send in this card every month to tell us whether you've changed your address. So they get a card every month. If they don't get a card, then, then they know something happened. Really, the one thing we really need to know, we're not standing there waiting for the person to die, but we just want to know when they've died so we can file the application. You mailed everything to him on January 10th? Have you heard anything from him? Oh, my goodness. When the investors realize how much they're helping that individual and their families uh, with, get up, off from under the, or to help to alleviate the financial burden, that, is, that is, um, is what I think is probably one of the more important considerations. An important consideration, yes, but not as important as the investor's own profit margin. Either way, a life insurance policy intended for future generations is being used right now to cover society's cruel oversights. Down in Missouri, there's Bill Crust, an AIDS broker with a vision. I thought, I want to start a business. This is a great business to be in. And I'm, I'm just brainstorming. I, I went to my health club to work out. I run into a friend. I'm telling him what I'm going to do. And he had a funny look on his face. And he says, why don't you call yourselves Vultures Incorporated? And I, did, I sat right down. You know, I never thought of that. He's not seeing the whole picture. This is a total win-win situation for everybody. In fact, Karen and I had an out-of-body experience when, you know, when, when we got to the, to the point uh, that we had an unlimited amount of money. You know, that night I dreamed, and it was more than just a dream, that I died several years from now and went to heaven. And there were thousands of people. People with were, It was souls. There was no faces. You met me at the prison, you're greeting me into heaven. And I really feel that's what will happen someday. I would say the next, next fastest growing segment of the market is cancer. And uh, now we're also seeing an awareness among uh, terminal heart patients. And uh, there will also be, and we've done some odd things like Lou Gehrig's disease and, and black lung and things that people on the average wouldn't think about, you know, but they're out there too. And uh, because people unfortunately die of a lot of things. We get 10% of face value. So if it's a million dollar policy, our fee is $100,000. Say, wow, wow. So how's business this year? Business is um, rather good, rather, rather good. I personally think I've, did a, I've done a lot better than I would have if I was stayed in CDs, you know. <laughs> but everything's relative. <laughs> you know, a lot of the critics just think it's kind of gorish that you would invest in this kind of thing. I, I think it's really, uh, it, it's really a, a, a humanitarian act to, to buy something that allows them to keep their home. It allows them to uh, keep their car. Uh, typically, they don't have a job at this point in their life. So, how did you feel when the AIDS patient you bought the policy from died? Well, you're sad, but you have your money to console you with. The outcome's going to be the same, whether they get the money or not. The outcome's always the same.